Hey guys, the Feta Bobble here, and this is update 59 in the forest dedicated server tutorial by Survivalist Gaming. Now, uh, this video is going to cover just this is the thing that's updated. So, if you don't want to know about the server tutorial and more about the dedicated server, then just know that that's is update 59, and there, there you go. This, this is the change besides making. Uh, log sleds not freak out other features when you grab them in the water. So this is the tutorial they linked and they give you two options. One is to go through the command line parameters and the other one is this server configuration file. If you want to use the server configuration file they say on the shortcut you create just add this parameter dedicated. If you want to do the command line parameter then you're gonna to have to add a lot more. <laughs> They also say you need to open up your ports 8766, 27015, and 27016, both TPC and UDP. I will give a link on how to port forward. Each router is slightly different, and so me showing my router is not going to help everybody. They're all going to be in slightly different locations. So I'll give a link on how to do that. Now right here you can see it's showing an option. And then it's followed by something, an option. You can just see this line here is an option, followed by a parameter. And that's how this is. Inside the brackets is the parameter, and you're obviously not putting the brackets in this line. So when it says server IP, this is the IP. Obviously, yours is not going to be XXXXX. It's going to be some local network server IP. And I'll put another link following this as well on how to figure that out. The ports uh, you could change, but I don't think that's a good idea. You should probably do these. And they already have that filled out for you. So when you copy paste this, the things you'd be changing is something like this, for example. So let's skip these because it's already put in there. And we shouldn't be changing them. Server name, this is just what people are going to see. So you set that to like wild bobos or I don't know, some, whatever you want. Max number of players. I'm curious if this goes over eight. I don't know. But you could set like two max players or eight at least, maybe more. Server password, just something that people need or not. Um, the default is none, so over here it says you actually don't see server password in the list. This means you don't need it. Uh, you can add it into the list if you'd like with a password, and then there would be one of course. But if it's not in there, it's just gonna mean the default is no password. Uh, server password for admin. I have no idea what admin tools inside the server are. You may want to actually set this to something. I have no, <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, admin account may basically be like God mode or being able to kick people. Set the Steam account. Blank means anonymous. I believe this server Steam account. Uh, I'm not actually 100% sure because I've never done Steam servers before. But they detail how to do that over here. So uh, it's just pretty simple. Just select this, right click search Google for and you'd be good to go set that up it's really easy but um, since I don't know what the hell it does we're just gonna <laughs> yeah, default is not so so to, sorry not default is not but uh, blank is anonymous so you don't need it to actually get this going now enable VAC that's valves anti-cheat system I'm not 100% sure how that'll work if it'll kick mod API's out or if it'll report them or something but um, it's not in the list normally so that means there would be no anti-cheat system and you'd actually have to put enable like you know type it out in there and then it'll be enabled we'll show this uh, in a second the server autosave interval um, you may want to create some backup system because I don't know if it's gonna do that for you but it's pretty self-explanatory add that in there if you wanted to save every so often difficulty again self-explanatory and you can see it's actually in there. Difficulty is normal. Slot, which is what slot saves. I think servers get their own save slots, but you may want to back up your entire save folder first, just in case. Show logs is probably a good idea, but uh, it's not in this list, so you'd have to add it if you want. But you can actually see slot one right there. Now this one, uh, int type, I think it is like initialization type. So new is what you want to start out with when you don't have a save set up, so you don't have a, a server save. But once you do and you want to continue that server save, you're obviously going to want to hit continue. And so be careful having people play on a new server into slot one 
and you start your server again and it sets a new again and so it saves over with a new whole entire game again uh, you're going to want to make sure that switch to continue after you run your server again the next time or change what slot it's working on or overwrite it on accident please hit the comments if we're not sure what that meant because that's going to like kill your game if you don't do it right so now we go to the server configuration file uh, all of the options basically that were in here and maybe a couple more I don't see any new ones but all of the options are basically in a file instead that makes it easier to edit and look at and we'll go that route which just means we're going to start it with dedicated and then again this is how you set up a server account which I have no idea what that means so let's go ahead and get to the other parts all right, this is the port forwarding website. I'm going to put a link in the description and in the comment. Uh, you can go through here with a list of routers and figure out what's yours. Near the top right, it's going to tell you your um, your IP address. So right here, open ports on your router, and you can just find yours. And it's going to give you instructions on how to do that. And with the port information that we went over already, you would take that and you just follow these based on whatever router you have. Since they're all slightly different, showing you mine on screen would would work for like one percent of you what is my browser.com is another website you can be using to figure out your local ip address and so that was one of the questions in the thing we went over i blurred mine out just because i don't want you to be using mine because mine is actually set differently than the standard one um so you want to figure out yours and use yours mine's probably going to mess yours up all right until you can actually get it through the normal method as described in the tutorial you might actually have to use steam command Thanks to Broadbent for giving me that tip. So <laughs> nobody's gonna like to have to do this unless you're familiar with command prompts, but you're just gonna go here. I'm gonna, again, links in the description and comment, but Steam command and go here and click on this to download it. And then you're gonna extract the zip to anywhere really, but it might be best to put it next to the forest because of the steps I'm gonna tell you to do next. All right, now that we have started the steam command prompt that you downloaded outside of the extracted folder and again this these steps might not be for everyone if this is like what the hell is going on maybe just not do it <laughs> but it's going to update in wherever you picked it uh wherever you you said it it's going to update and extract a lot of files so probably put it in a folder if it's on your desktop after it's done and it gives you this flashing steam message here First, you're going to want to log in, so you just type in login. Uh, you don't actually have to log in with an account, so just log in anonymous. You're connected, you're all good. Next, you're going to want to download an app. So you're going to want to tell it where to download. So force install directory, and then you have to pick the path. Um, because I don't want to type some long thing out for you, we're instead we're going to hit the dot and a slash, and then we're gonna say something like test and then close it. So what the dot is gonna do is it's gonna put it in a folder where you put Steam command. So if you put Steam command in a new folder on the desktop, inside a new folder, it's now gonna put a new folder called test and put everything inside there, what we're installing. So you may not wanna call it test, but the dot is gonna put it down one inside that folder. So here, now it's put it in that proper location. The next step, is to type out the actual install so you do app update app id which is just this five five six four five zero and that's just the up, update app id so yeah install that by hitting enter i've already installed it but it's going to go through a whole bunch of shit, and that's going to install it into that folder so mine would be in where it is under test so i put mine under my bug folder <laughs> So you can see Steam command prompt here, that's where I ran it. And it put all of these files in there. So like I said, you want this to be contained somewhere. You don't want it to just be in the Steam folder, or sorry, in your desktop, because it's gonna just shit all over your desktop. So put it in a folder at least, if you don't care where you're putting it, put it in somewhere. So it contains all of these extra files it makes. Then as I told you, I put mine in test, correct? So here's my test folder, like I told you. And then this is our downloaded app. Next step you're going to want to do is right click create shortcut. It's going to make this. You might want to put that on your desktop unless that's where you've already installed it. You're going to right click properties this. 
and you're going to want to add at the end here either remember from the very beginning we talked about all of those parameters that's where the parameters go so this is dedicated which means it's going to go into our configuration file as i talked about before but if you wanted you could put in like server initialization password all, all of those little command fields we were talking about you put that in right there and then of course you'd hit apply and that's how it'd be now let's go into the server configurations so this is where mine is located yours will be in a different location i'll put in the description a copy paste for you uh, you can just simply type percent app data no space and then percent again and it'll take you to um, i believe it'll take you to app data roaming which you don't want to be at you want to go to local lol but once you get to that location, which again, you can just do a copy paste from my comment description if you're lost. It should give you the forest and the forest dedicated server. You go into there, you click DS, and you have server config. You might have to open with and then pick notepad and you get this. So as I talked about before, you're gonna wanna put your local IP here and I told you how to get it. Leave all of these ports alone. Pick the server name you like. VAC is the anti-cheat, you can turn that on and off. Server password, so this is like if you want people to be able to join who have a, uh, you know, like wild bubbles and the wild bubbles password or something. I, again, I don't know what the hell the admin thing is. I'm leaving it blank for now, but you may want to add something there. I made a token ID, so I have one. Uh, you don't need one, you can leave it blank for anonymous. I don't really know what the hell that means either. Time between saves, this is in minutes, so every 15 minutes it'll save. Difficulty normal. We've never made a game before, so we're gonna make it new because it wants to start a new game. Um, if you were continuing from slot one because you already had a game session running, you'd probably want continue there. And again, we're gonna pick slot one. Show logs, it was set to off, but I think it's important to see what's going wrong or right, so I turned it to on. Now make sure you save. We did control S, we go to the file save. Now, we go back to our thing we set on the desktop or wherever you set it that has a dedicated tag on it. And you click on it and get it to run. If you wanna log into your server, make sure that you uh, stick it on another computer because I think if you try to put it on, if you wanna log into your game from your own server, it might cause an issue. And there, there you have it. I mean, this is this is the beta. This is like maybe even you call this the alpha test of uh, dedicated servers. I will probably be updating this guide later because we can make a better or things will change. Hopefully, some things will change because I would like to be able to type in like save at this log here and get it to save, so I don't have to worry about if people have done something I need to save. Um, but this is it right now. If you have any questions, feel free to put them down below. Keep in mind, there's just things not in my control. But as I get more information, I'll try to help everybody as much as I can. And this is dedicated servers. Um, so you leave this up and other people can join in and it doesn't shut when you, you leave or join. You know, that that's pretty cool. Uh, oh, uh, make sure to check out the forest Reddit for a dedicated Reddit server. So I think that sounds pretty cool. Um... I think the, the password is uh, Reddit, but yeah, just go check out the forest Reddit. So let me know down below what you thought of this update and what you'd like to see in the server features, what you'd like to see improved. Um, at this point, you're seeing this, you may not have to do the Steam command nonsense. It may just be in the proper section under tools. And if you did do the Steam command nonsense, you may want to get yours under the proper section with the tool system later. Um, that's up to you. Anyways, I hope you all enjoyed, and I look forward to seeing everybody in the next video. Thank you so much, and have a wonderful day.